Okay, so a few years ago, I did a video on combining multiple worksheets to a master worksheet in Excel. And since then, there have been a lot of updates. So I just want to do a quick video about some new ways you can do it, which would be a little faster and a little cooler probably. So let's just go over it. So I have this worksheet with three tabs and I want to just create a summary. Now you can create that summary in this worksheet or you can create that summary on a completely different file. So if you're gonna be making that summary on a different file that what you want to do, just go ahead and close this worksheet that has all these tabs and open a blank workbook or whichever workbook it is where you're gonna be actually doing the summary. Now in my case, I'm gonna be doing the summary in the same spreadsheet. So I'm just gonna be here and I have this three tabs with my data. So I have this partial data, partial data in three different tabs. So I'm probably gonna get questions about what if the column names are different. So let's just go ahead and delete one of these columns here. So it doesn't match the rest. And let's also go to this one and move this column over here. Right, so we have all the columns with the same names, but the columns are displaced now. So you can still do this, even if your data is like this. All you have to worry about is that your column names match for columns that need to be combined. So what we're gonna use to do this is the same Power Query tool I talked about before. Again, for Excel 2010, 2013, you can install an add-on. For newer versions, you simply just go under this data section and find this get and transform data. Now, if it's an add-on, you're gonna get a whole new menu for this add-on where you're gonna find these options. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go under get data from file and from workbook. I'm gonna click on that. And basically you just have to navigate and find that file. So I'm already in the folder where the file is. That's my file that's right now open. So I'm just gonna go ahead and import that. So once I do that, I'm gonna get this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna click on one of these worksheets that I want to be combined and just click on this transform data. And in some versions, I believe that might be called edit or something like that, but it's the same thing. So once you do that, you're gonna appear here. So it basically just connects, it does some things and if I open this panel on the left, you'll see it has the name for this connection. So that's the name right here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna remove a lot of these things that this connection did. I'm gonna remove this change type. I'm gonna remove this step to promote headers. I'm gonna remove this navigation. So if I just remove all of those and just keep the source, I'm gonna end up with this. So if you look here, what this is, is basically the names of my tabs, at least the first three. And you can see I also get this other things that are hidden tabs that are usually a part of your filters. If you filter your data, you may end up with things like this. So we wanna make sure we just keep a list of worksheets that we need combined. So the first thing you'll probably want to do is to just set the hidden column to false so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now you could also go by the name and add some additional filter to this. So maybe you're planning to add more worksheets to this, like for example, the one I'm adding right now. And the next time I don't want that to pick up this data too and combine it to this. So I may have some sort of structure where I can say every worksheet that has some text in the name, I'm gonna use that in this combination. So if you look, all of my worksheets have this data part something in them. So I'm gonna use that in my advantage to just filter to all worksheets with those names. So I'm gonna go under this name. Now I don't want to just pick this tab names unless you only want it to just set to those three tab names. I want this in a way that if I add more of these data parts, it just keeps adding to this combined list that I'm doing. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go under this text filters and I'm gonna say, in my case, it begins with, 
In your case, it could be something like contains or whatever you feel is right. So I'm gonna do begins with, and I believe all of these are case sensitive, by the way, so you wanna be careful. Just for testing, I'm just gonna do part lowercase to see if this is case sensitive. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. See, I got nothing. So I'm gonna go to this last step, click on this gear icon to get back to those settings and change this to data part with uppercase P. So it starts with that. So if I hit okay now, well, apparently that was not enough. So let's go back and see. Oh, this should be data, not date. And now that I did this, I have to still check with the lowercase to see what happens. No, it still doesn't work. So it is case sensitive after all. Part. Okay, so I got all of those that begin with data part. So right now, if I just click on this data, see it says it's a table. And if you look here, the table has this column one, column two, column three. So it didn't figure out that it should be using this headers as the column names. So we need to make sure that it does do that so that we use those column names so we can figure out the order of these columns and which one belongs where. So in order for me to do this, I'm gonna do a quick change to the steps. I'm gonna click on this source step, which is the first step. Notice when I click on that, it just shows me the steps that I did here. If I go to the second step, it will show me the results after that step. And I click on the last step, this is the last step. So I wanna modify the first step just a little bit. I'm gonna go to that source. And if you look here, see it goes to this function on top. It says Excel workbook file content, and it goes to that file, it opens that file, and then it has this comma null. So this null refers to if it should be using headers or not. So right now it's not set to use headers. So I'm gonna replace that null with true, just like that in lowercase. I'm gonna go ahead and apply this. So now if I just go back to that last step and just roll over that table, we don't wanna click on that table because if you click on it, it will probably open it. So yeah, apparently you wanna click on this side, not here. So don't click on the actual header. And if you accidentally do click, that's okay. Just make sure, see, it adds the steps. You wanna remove those. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this and uncheck this to get back to the last step that I was on. So if I click on this white space side of that cell, see it shows me the table. Now you can see there's no column one, column two, column three anymore. It actually picked up the column headers as the column name. So if I go to this one, see the same thing. I go to this one, same thing. So now all I have to do is just expand this. So first I'm gonna just get rid of all the other columns I don't need. So I'm gonna keep this name so I know which worksheet this comes from. So I'm gonna click on this name, then I'm gonna press control and select this data column two. So these two columns, that's all I'm gonna need. The rest I'm gonna remove. So I'm gonna right click and do remove other columns. So all I'm gonna do at this point is just click on this little icon next to that data and see it shows all the columns and I'm just gonna have all of them selected and press okay. And you'll see how that expanded that whole thing from our multiple data sets. Now, one thing you'll probably notice is that this still has all the columns that I used to have. And the reason for that is because I didn't save my file before I connected to this. It's still using unsaved version of my file at this point, but that's fine. We'll just keep doing this and then we'll save it and reload it and you can see what happens with our results. So I got all of these things wherever they're supposed to be. One thing you probably want to do at this point is just if you have any date columns, just choose the data type for them. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this column and go under data type and choose date. You can also do things like numbers, currency, etc. but I'm gonna leave the rest as is. So right now I'm kind of happy with this. You can go here and rename this to say like worksheet name. And once you got all of this done and set up, you probably want to rename this. So I'm going to call this combined data. And now we need to load this back to Excel. So what I do, I just go close and load, close and load. And in a second, it's going to add that worksheet for us. So it's called sheet one, and it has the combination of the original three data tabs I had. I'm just going to call this master 
doesn't matter what the name is, just don't call it data part because now it's gonna become one of the parts. Let's go ahead and save this file. So now once I save this, these are no longer the same. Remember, I deleted some columns, I moved them around and things like that. So which column did I delete from one of them? Well, I guess we'll find out in a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click on this, the master, and see on the right, we have this thing that allows us to refresh this data. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that refresh. And now you see it went back with a new file and it did figure out that in data part two, there is no brand column anymore. So if I go back to data part two, see, and that's why it's not loading there. So remember, you don't have to make sure the column names match while you're building this too. It's still gonna work out. I just forgot to save it in the beginning and I'm too lazy to go back and re-record the whole thing. So let me show you the next cool part about this. Now, the way we set this up is that, let's say now we do another partial data. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another data set here. I'm gonna copy one of these worksheets. And let me just delete all of these, just keep one line. And this one is called data part four. It doesn't matter if it's called four, I could call it data part another as long as it starts with data part because that's what I said I want to filter to. So I'm going to do some date here. So I got all of this. So with this, without doing anything else, let's go and try to refresh our master and see what happens. Nothing happens. And why is that? Again, I did not save this file. So this connection goes back to our file, gets the data again, but if the file is not saved, it's not gonna be able to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this file and then click on that refresh one more time. And see, as soon as I do that, this pops up with the new worksheet name with this data. So remember, it's a connection to the file. If the file is not saved, even though we're in the same file doing this, and as you can remember, I said you can do it from a different file, it's still going and connecting to the file and pulling the data. So if the file is not saved, there's no data to pull. So again, I can go back now and add another line to this. And again, I'll have to save this first, so Control S. So go back and reload this. So 20 lines now, you can see all of that shows up. Now at the same time, if I do a copy of this and call this more data, and let's just do something in here as well. I'm gonna delete these lines. I'll just keep all of these the same, just change these amounts. So I have this, I'm gonna go ahead and save this. So if I go back to master now and refresh, nothing. And that's because of that filter step with it. We said it has to contain this data part in the beginning for this to work. So if I just go and rename this to data part more, just so that it matches that pattern. And as we figured out that case sensitive, so if I do lowercase part, it's not gonna work. I'm gonna go ahead and save this again, and let's go back and reload and see what happens. Shows up right there. If you decide you wanted this to be sorted or something like that, the best way to do this is to go back and edit the connection. So what you would do, you would right click on this, do edit, and then on the screen, go ahead and sort it. And then it will just keep sorting it every time you add new data using whatever sorting order you did here. But you don't want to sort it the regular way in the worksheet because you want this to be an active connection so you can refresh and get the results back. So I'm gonna go ahead and close and load. And again, now this should be in sorted order by date. And the last thing I'm gonna mention here is that if you close this thing on the right, the way you can get it back, if you go to data section, there is gonna be this button right here that goes to your connections. If you click on that, it will show up again. And then also remember, this is an active connection. This is linking to the source file. So if I go back and edit this and just look at my first step source, see it's linking to C, the folder Excel data and the name of the file. 
So you want to start this after you decided where the file is gonna stay. Because if I move that file right now, then this connection is not gonna work. I mean, you can come back and update the link manually, but it's not gonna update it for you. So it's probably best to first make sure you put the file where it needs to go and then come back and do this whole thing we just did. And then it's just gonna work. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.